I am fully aware my hair is struggling today, but this is the best it's gonna get, so we're just not gonna talk about it. Hello and welcome to another adventure here on my channel. Today I'm gonna be talking about the new Black Widow movie, and I know I am pretty late to the party making a YouTube video about this movie, but honestly, I finally saw it, and I have a lot of thoughts, and frankly, my friends and family are already tired of hearing about them. So I wanted to go ahead and make this video. Because honestly, what else is the point of having a YouTube channel? Now, I'm gonna try to keep this video as spoiler-free as possible, though I assume most people watching this video who clicked on this video probably have already seen the movie. Still, if you haven't, I am gonna keep the spoilers to a minimum. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the premise of the movie, the setup of it. So if you wanna go into the movie 100% blind like I did, then this is not the video for you, but I assume if that was the case, you probably wouldn't have clicked on this video. So. To give just a little bit of information if you have not seen it, this Black Widow movie is set in between Civil War and Infinity War and it fills in the gap that is what Natasha Black Widow was doing during that time she was sort of on the run, being a fugitive for taking Cap's side in Civil War. And during this time, another woman who was trained in the Red Room, trained to be a Russian spy like Natasha was, escapes the Red Room and comes and contacts her. And Natasha is like, wait a second, I thought the Red Room was already broken up. I thought I already killed the head guy. What do you mean it still exists? And her and the other girl, Yelena, who Natasha sees as like a sister to her, go on this mission to bring down the Red Room once and for all and kill the leader of the Red Room. The person who is behind kidnapping these girls and training them to be super spies, super assassins, and making them into Black Widows. Now, the only thing I knew going into this movie was that it was getting mixed reviews. I heard some people really, really loved it and some people thought it was a bad movie and didn't like it at all. Overall, I think it was a good movie. It was fun, it was enjoyable. I had a good time sitting in the theater at three o'clock on a Monday because there was no way I was going during a busy crowded time with everything going on in the world recently, especially in my area. But it was a fun time to go to the movies, have a movie date with my boyfriend. It was an enjoyable film. It was a good movie to see on the big screen like Marvel movies tend to be because they're full of action. They're very visually interesting and it was Overall, I'd say a good movie. I really liked the acting in it. There was a fun new character introduced in Yelena and it was nice to see Black Widow finally getting her own title movie where she is the main character, she is the main focus. Considering she's the last of the major Avengers besides Hawkeye to get this treatment. And I'd say Natasha is more important than Hawkeye in the MCU. She is up there with Captain America and Thor and Iron Man as being a very important influential character in the story in the MCU. So it was a fun movie. It was visually interesting. The action scenes were fun. The character interactions and relationship between Natasha and Yelena was really interesting. And that was all good to see. And that's what I liked about this movie. However, this movie was just a good movie. And that is so, so disappointing to me when it had every opportunity to be a great movie. This had the potential to be one of the best movies in the MCU. People have been wanting a Black Widow movie for so long and they finally give it to us. And first of all, it really felt like an afterthought because this was clearly a movie set during phase three of Marvel, but it comes out during phase four. And I know that it had to be pushed back because of COVID and everything, but why did this movie not come out before Infinity War? That's not COVID's fault. That's a decision they made. And I personally didn't know that's when it was set when I went in to watch this movie, but it's a very questionable decision to me because why was this not a Black Widow origin story? When people have been saying, we want a Black Widow movie from the MCU, most people that I have seen specifically wanted an origin story. Because all the rest of the major heroes got an origin story movie. And Natasha, who arguably has the most interesting origin story, has not. Because she started out as a little girl kidnapped and trained to be this perfect Russian spy. And there was a little bit at the beginning of the movie about her training, but why was this whole movie not her training, 
her operating as this Russian agent and then this free agent that was selling her skills to the highest bidder like she's talked about in other movies and then Hawkeye comes and decides to give her a second chance and recruit her into S.H.I.E.L.D. Why was that not the story of this movie? That's what I want to see. And the frustrating thing about this movie is they kept referencing that whole story and it felt very teasing in a way because it's like, why am I getting references to that when I haven't been able to watch that when that's what me and a large majority of the fandom have been saying we've wanted since Black Widow was introduced as a character in the MCU. Because that is the most interesting thing about her character is that character arc of how she starts very much a bad guy and then becomes a good guy and then redeems herself, joins the Avengers and tries to make up for all the bad she's done. Show us the bad she's done. Like I wanted this movie to be villain Natasha. I want to see her, the main character, being the bad guy, doing bad things and then have to make up for it. And I think the reason they didn't want to do that is because that is such a dark story and they want to keep their heroes pure in a way. They want people to continue to root for their heroes. And I think Disney thought that if they really showed the dark side of Natasha, people wouldn't like her anymore. But it's like, that's why people like Natasha. That's the most interesting thing about her character. And the thing that makes her stand out among the other Avengers is she started as a bad guy and now she's a good guy. And that is such a fun, interesting, juicy story to tell. And that's what the fandom has been asking for. And then we don't get it. Because when you look at Natasha's character, in comparison to the rest of the Avengers, she's not a superhero. She's a human being who is very, very highly trained and has honed her skills and has a very specific skill set that is very useful. She is able to manipulate people to get information. We've seen her do it in the Avengers multiple times, especially with Loki. She was the one that tricked him and out chess moved, mind gamed him into giving information. That's what she does. But she's this human who was highly trained and the only thing really super about her is her mind and how she manipulates people, which is very useful and a great skill and a great character. But it leads me into what I think the second biggest flaw with this movie was the second choice they made that made this only a good movie instead of a great movie is that this is fundamentally a superhero movie, which sounds like, yeah, of course it is. It's a Marvel movie. What did you expect? But the thing with Black Widow is she's not really a superhero. She's a spy. This should have been a spy movie. Even if they didn't give us the origin story we wanted, this movie should have been a spy movie. This should have been about espionage, not superhero goes kicks ass. Like, yes, I want to see Black Widow kick ass in a Black Widow movie. That's fine, but I need it to be realistic to what they have already established this character's limits and abilities are. Because several times during this movie, I kept going in my mind, she would have died there. She would have died there. She would have gotten so much more injured there. And she didn't. And it really broke my suspension of disbelief because it has already been established in this franchise, she's a human, she is not super. When watching like Captain America and Thor going through these really intense superhero fights and battles and stuff, I can go, okay, well, the reason they're surviving this and not getting hurt as bad is because they're super. Even with Iron Man, I can believe that the suit protects him in a way that just a normal human without the suit wouldn't have. So I'm like, okay, he can take more because of that. Thor, Captain America, they can take more because of their super abilities. Natasha is just human. She's an amazing human and I can very much believe that she can take more of a beating than your average person because of her training but she is still very much human. And the thing she does in this movie, it's just like, no, <laughs> that, that completely blows my suspension of disbelief. And it made it a much less interesting movie because of that. And this movie had already made the decision coming out after we've seen her death in the MCU, that it was having lower stakes than any other Marvel movie going in because there was no chance that Natasha was gonna die. We know she didn't die in this movie because we've seen her die later. So we need a different source of stakes because we know this character is not going to die. 
but when the stakes they put into the movie with the fight scenes kind of is the like, oh no, how's she gonna get out of this? Like, I know she's going to because I know she survives this. It, it just was not a good direction for the film to go. And if the stakes were more, is she going to be able to steal this MacGuffin, steal this important thing, that's more interesting because it's not life or death because they've already taken the life or death stakes off the table by having this movie come out after Endgame. And the final major mistake that bugged me in this movie is Natasha's character arc in this movie because she fundamentally didn't have one. At the end of Civil War, or the beginning of this movie, where this movie takes place, I fully believe she is the type of character that would sacrifice herself for the universe. And at the end of this movie, I very much believe she is the type of character who would sacrifice herself for the universe. So it's not like this character goes point A, all this stuff happens, point B. It's like point A, all this stuff happens, she's still at point A. She's still the exact same person. She hasn't changed, she hasn't grown as a character. And that's just like a mistake with basic storytelling. Like you're telling me this story because I want to see this character, this person grow and evolve and the things she experiences to change her. But she doesn't change in this movie. And if you're gonna go back in time in the MCU and you're gonna put this piece here and be like, this piece was missing, it needs to make what happens next in the MCU more powerful. It needs to feel like a more complete story. Like, yes, there is a reason this movie was made because this piece was missing and there's no missing piece there. It doesn't make Natasha's sacrifice more powerful. And that's why I think the fact that they didn't make this an origin story, an even worse choice because if you go back and tell me her origin after she's already dead, it's kind of like, well, I already have the last piece of her story, now I have the first piece. But this piece just doesn't feel like I needed it. I didn't need to know this piece for her story in the MCU to be complete. And the piece that I wanted, the before piece, you just referenced to, and you give me a little more information, but it's kind of in discussions about what happened rather than showing me the story of what happened. And it really felt like the only reason they made this movie was to replace Natasha to introduce the character Yelena, who is her sort of sisterly figure in the movie so that she can go on and sort of be the Black Widow now in the MCU now that Scarlett Johansson is gonna be moving on. And by the way, I do wanna say I'm fully aware that Scarlett Johansson is suing Disney, but I'm not really gonna talk about it in this video because I don't know enough to really have an opinion on it and it doesn't really have to do with why I was disappointed in the movie. So back to what I was saying, Yelena is a great character. I like her, she was fun, she was one of my favorite parts of this movie and the actress who played her did a phenomenal job and I look forward to seeing her more in the MCU but this was her origin story under the guise of being a Black Widow movie. It's like they weren't sure people would go see a Yelena origin story, so they connected it to Black Widow so the fan base would go see it to see Black Widow and really they could make it something else. And it just felt kind of like false advertising to me. Like I would definitely go see a Yelena backstory. I am hella interested in having some female superhero origin stories in the MCU. I loved the Captain Marvel movie. But if that's what they wanted to do, they should have just said that instead of saying this is a Black Widow movie when it kind of wasn't. If this had been the second Black Widow movie, if we had gotten that espionage origin story, her and Hawkeye, that transformation, and that had been Black Widow 1, and this was Black Widow 2, I wouldn't really be complaining. It's a fine mid-tier Marvel superhero movie. I would have my issues with it, specifically about them making it such a superhero movie and her surviving things she definitely wouldn't have, but I wouldn't have been so disappointed because I already would have had the piece of the story that I really wanted. This would have been a great second Black Widow movie, but every decision they made with it just felt weird and off and disappointing. The fact that it wasn't an origin story, it wasn't a spy movie, and Black Widow as a character didn't change. It had no character growth or development. Yeah, the fight scenes were cool, but, but you can't build a great movie 
on fight scenes as the foundation. That's not a good enough crux for a story. And you have this amazing character and we finally get the Black Widow movie. And it was just good. And that is the biggest disappointment to me because I was so excited for this. I was so excited to finally have a Black Widow movie because I've loved the character for a long time now. And it was just okay. And there's one more thing I gotta say about this movie that pissed me off. It's very nitpicky, but it drove me nuts through this movie. Both Natasha and Yelena in their ears had cartilage piercings. Yelena only had one on the outside of one ear, but Natasha had several, like a whole constellation of piercings in her ear. We saw it on a couple close-ups of her character. And yes, it looked really cool. Personally, I love the constellation piercings. It's not something I want, but I think it looks really cool. And I'm not against cartilage piercings. I have, I have two, that would be hella hypocritical of me. I'm not against piercings, tattoos, anything like that, but it pissed me off because it made no sense. These are fighters. These are assassins. Why would they have cartilage piercings? It's stupid. It'd be stupid to have them because the piercings could get caught on something in the middle of a fight and then you are in more pain than you had to be in. Like they could get caught in your hair. They could get caught on your clothes. They could get caught on your enemy's clothes. They could get caught on something in the environment while you're in a fight. Why? I know it's the smallest detail and it doesn't really matter that much, but it drove me nuts because I'm just like, practicality wise, this makes no sense for these characters to have because they are both brilliant fighters and they're fully aware they're fighters. Why? Why do they have cartilage piercings? It's such a bad idea. I can understand female spies having like their earlobes pierced because what if they go to some fancy dinner gala, get all dressed up and wear nice earrings with it? Okay, I, I can understand that for blending in being spies stuff. Like I can get that. But cartilage piercings? All over the ears, a ton of them. I know Yelena only had the one, but still, <laughs> it's such a bad idea and it drove me nuts. And I am very happy that their clothing was very practical in this movie. This was not the, oh, sexy female superhero outfits that we have seen in the past, even on Black Widow. This was very practical. They are in this clothing because it's comfortable and they can fight and it protects them. And I was happy to see that. But all the cartilage piercings, I was just like, you were so close, Marvel. You were so freaking close. But that is not practical. And both of these characters are way too smart to do that. That is my soapbox rant about the cartilage piercings. Yes, they looked great on them, but I was just like, that's so unpractical for female spies to have. But anyway, I can see why people would really enjoy this movie. Like I said, I enjoyed it. I had a good time watching this movie. It was a fun watch. And they were going for a good message that society undervalues women and girls in particular. And I liked that, but it just could have been so, so much better. And that's my problem with this movie. I didn't dislike it. It was just disappointing because honestly, Fans have been thinking of better stories for Black Widow since the beginning of this fandom. There's some amazing Black Widow fan fiction, fan edits, fan art, and Black Widow just deserved better from the studio. So with that, if you have seen this movie, please let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments below. Please let me know if you were just as irrationally angry as I was about the cartilage piercings but I would love to know your thoughts on all of it. And with that, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you all next time. And honestly, I thought I was gonna love this movie so much that I went ahead and ordered a Black Widow t-shirt before I went to see the movie. And I don't regret that because I still love the character, but I just, I, I'm not as hyped as I thought I would be after seeing that movie.